I invite you to stand as you are able. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up. And in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant, Cynthia, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me as we read in unison of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
a reading from the letter of, of Paul to the Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back in fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we, when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness to our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be received or revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ. Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sore? No, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You're invited to stand and join in singing him. 293, which is found in the hymnal in front of you, and the pew back. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. 
Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Before that gospel reading, we sang a favorite hymn of Cynthia's. I sing a song of the saints of God. Now that last verse is really the telling one. They lived not only in ages past. There are hundreds of thousands still. The world is bright with the joyous, joyous saints who love to do Jesus' will. You can meet them in school or in lanes or at sea, in church or in trains or in shops or at tea. For the saints of God are just folk like me, and I mean to be one too. We gather to celebrate the life of Cynthia Hart, a child of God by adoption through baptism, a joyous saint in her own way, well known for her quick and often mischievous wit. Throughout the duration of her earthly life, she was an Episcopalian. Finding Good Shepherd Episcopal Church just as soon as she reached Friendswood in 1967. Her love of children having six of her own and of handicrafts brought her and others around her deep joy. Cynthia's loves and talents were a blessing to this community especially to her family and her friends, as she remained quietly grounded by her faith. Many will, of course, remember her instrumental role in helping to establish the Shepherd's Nook, a beautiful and enduring ministry of Good Shepherd. As we give thanks to God for Cynthia's life well lived in Christ, we have the opportunity to also reflect on our own lives in Christ. We are reminded today that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Cynthia is not separated from the love of God today, but has entered into the nearer presence of our Lord. And we too are not separated from the love of God, but are invited more deeply into a meaningful and life-giving relationship with God the Father as his own beloved. We celebrate also the joy and hope of the resurrection today. This is our proclamation for Cynthia and for all whom we love but see no longer that life is changed, not ended. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. So that where I am, there you may be also. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you are able as we continue with the Apostles' Creed. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered, was crucified, he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of the people. For our sister Cynthia, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Cynthia and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend, Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You Hear promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for Cynthia and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest let light perpetual shine upon them. May her soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You're invited to greet one another with the Lord's peace. we turn to the second part of this service to communion, I want to make a, a few things, uh, let you know about a few things, how we do communion here. Communion is open to all who are baptized. You're welcome to come forward and receive communion when it's time at the altar rail. The ushers will dismiss your rows. Uh, one of the two ways you can receive is you can hold your hands out and receive the bread in your hand. You can eat that bread and then wait for the chalice and drink from the chalice, or you can keep that bread and when the chalice comes by, dip it in the, into the wine in the chalice and receive it that way. 
If you want to come forward and are not interested in receiving communion but would prefer a blessing instead, just cross your arms like this to let me know and I'll say a prayer of blessing for you. So hopefully that clears everything up. Uh, there is a communion hymn. You're welcome to join in singing that communion hymn that is listed in the bulletin. And then there's going to be an instrumental piece after that. The family wants to make sure that you all know you are invited to a reception afterwards in Sterling Hall. To get to that reception, you'd go through the breezeway, through the double doors, and take a right that takes you into Sterling Hall. There will also be, uh, I think, a time of uh, family sharing during that reception as well. So please join the family in that reception. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. You're invited to stand as we begin our Eucharistic prayer, which is found in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you 
joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us.
gifts of God for the people of God.
You're invited to stand or kneel as we pray. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Sorrow and pain are no more. Neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, for sorrow and pain are no more, sighing but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, We commend your servant, Cynthia. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.